Well, uh, maybe we ought to go ahead and get started. All right, let's do the best we can. I know some of these things, I'll give you an honest answer, and I hope you can edit them out. <laughs> I'm some of them. Well, my name is Keith Yow. I teach furniture and cabinet making at Cedar Ridge High School uh, in Hillsboro, North Carolina. Between Orange High School and Cedar Ridge, is I guess working on my 18th year in high school teaching. So you uh, you do cabinet making and uh, did you tell me furniture? Yes, we right, focus okay. on on fine furniture for the most part. Well, what's a what's a typical kind of project that you do in in your classes? Well, my class per se is guided by a state mandated curriculum. So that curriculum does not include digital fabrication. So we use digital fabrication uh, kind of exceeding the curriculum for certain students. Uh, I use it primarily with my third year students and above. Sometimes some second year students will take an interest in it or show an aptitude for you know working with the computers and the machines more so than traditional woodworking. Okay. Uh, primarily, our projects have been focused on fundraisers. Uh, we do a, a, a couple of we got a couple of bread and butter items, uh, desk nameplates. You see that one? Yep. Yeah, yeah, I can see that very clearly. Desk Thanks. Nameplates. And of course, I've got one with um, there it is, one with my name on it. <laughs> and of course, we you know just make the blanks and then route in the various names and finish them. Uh, you can order one with your name on it. <laughs> so uh, that that is uh, one of our bread and butter items that sell quite well and it's really popular with the with the faculty here at school and we make those free of charge for the faculty here but cool. we do advertise at a number of locations and sell them. A long time ago, somebody brought a cutting board in and wanted to make them one, a really large one for the kitchen, and they wanted a little groove or a moat routed around it to catch any juice or liquid. So we made them one, and of course, that got popular with a few students. And the issue is learning to control a traditional handheld router and stop and not get any overrun in the corner, and also not to burn it. Uh, and we had the shop bot sitting there, and I said, you know, that machine can do that. And I had a really talented student that was good with the, the computer programming, and he actually wrote us a program for the shop bot that we make these cutting boards any size we can make them. When we glue up scraps, there's typically no set size. We make them typically as thick as we can make them, random width, random length doesn't matter what size we make them, all we have to do on the shop bot, once we clamp it down, is tell it the measurement of the length and the width, length referring to the x-axis, width referring to the y-axis. We can just type that right into the, the prompts on the screen of the program the young man wrote, and it zips the moat right around there for us, perfect every time, no overruns in the corners, no burning, and... Uh, you know, it adds an extra five dollars to each cutting board. Primarily, we are looking for anything that we can put in a process to make multiples of, for the purpose of selling to support our Skills USA organization and our shop in general. Can you tell me about sort of the experience of the students that come in, and um, you know how that that interaction with your your digital fabrication capabilities works? Usually most students start in the program just through word of mouth about the program uh, being successful, being uh, popular with the other students, being uh, opportunities for them to excel in some competitions. And the beginning class really doesn't focus on the shop bot or any digital fabrication tools at all. It focuses on basic woodworking. But inevitably they'll say, or see the machine in the corner and ask about it and, and you know question about it and typically you know we'll run a name tag or something for them or let them make their own name tag and once they see it run some of them 
you know, are, are just not real attracted to it, and others are just, damn, that's what I want to do. Uh, they really would rather work at the computer than work at the at the bench in the shop. So it has really brought a different mindset of student to the classroom uh, once they get involved with it. You know, some students just aren't physically motivated to work in the shop. They're more mentally motivated to work at the computer. And some of those students really find they can do really, really, really well at it. In, in the standard course of study, there is no class focused on CNC manufacturing for the woodworking industry. I see. The, woodwork, the woodworking curriculum is based on traditional cabinet painting. And uh, it, is there, uh, is there a, um, a, an opportunity where you could offer something that was an elective, something that was, say, above and beyond and not necessarily part of a standard course of study? Certainly at the local levels we could do that. Uh, but it, that's going to take willingness from the local administration to do so. Definitely need their cooperation. It's definitely something that could be done. I'm almost at mercy of my own success with the traditional woodworking program. In other words, if my traditional woodworking program was about to falter and collapse, I might come with them and say, hey, let's try this new concept. And, and, and we, we've had other programs within the school that's had really, really, really low enrollment, and they have changed class offerings for that teacher to increase enrollment. Given that you're, you're, uh, the, the, the kids that are enrolled in your program are very interested in traditional woodworking, and I, I presume are, would be further interested in a career kind of in that direction, um, do you feel that, that their ability to have experience with CNC could positively, negatively, or neutrally impact their, their future, uh, their future career and job opportunities? I see nothing but positive from their exposure to CNC. It is no longer the way of the future. It is currently the way of now. So I think we have to keep pushing forward and have to find a way to bring, uh, I call it modern manufacturing into the school. I was wondering, is there a student or a few students that you could think of that um, that had sort of a, uh, an educational experience related to, um, you know, your router or your CNC that you feel is worth sharing? Uh, yeah, I think I, I, three kids come to mind immediately uh, over the years, and I guess in, in, in the nature of confidentiality, we'll, we'll leave their names out of it, but uh, one of them came from another high school where he was studying computer engineering and sadly our computer engineering program had not survived very well here and after that closed down uh, we we made a special arrangement to to get him into a class specifically so he could work with the the the, uh, the shop bot and he sculpted a wolf's head and a moon in, in full 3d and uh, through the generosity of the ShopBot company, uh, we took it over there and cut it out in a full five-foot circle, and it now hangs in the cafeteria uh, as a gift from the class of 2006. Uh, and, and it's, it's a beautiful piece of work. And that young man would never want to go out in the wood shop and do traditional woodworking at a bench. But when I gave him that computer program and set him free, uh, he amazed me. Uh, another young man uh, is the one that wrote the, the, we call it the moat program for the, for the uh, cutting boards. Uh, he just, you know, again, is it, has a natural aptitude toward a computer. And uh, he probably would have never stayed in this class two or three years without me challenging him with every little project I can. I mean, he did the little cube project. He, you know, he wrote the programs for that. He wrote the program for the moat. And 
sadly to say, as the teacher, uh, with with all the other requirements made of me, I haven't had the time to sit down to learn to program. And and he did not write the programs in uh, anything such as Part Wizard. He looked into programs that come with the ShopBot or into this, this software, and he taught himself G code. And, and you know how to how to program the machine using basic lines of code and, and typed it. And it, uh, he graduated high school early and went on to uh, dual enrollment. So uh, last I heard from him, he was over at Durham Tech earning his senior high school degree last year, as well as college credits also. Uh, another young man that is scheduled to graduate here in January, when he entered this school as a ninth grader, I, I really, really was concerned that he would never graduate from here. And he, you know, went through the basic class when he showed an interest in the machine and and I would say now we call him our ShopBot Guru. Any, any student that wants to cut anything on the ShopBot, we send him to this one student and I say, hey, there he is. This is your problem. This is your teacher. And he teaches other kids how to use it. So uh, it, it's definitely been a positive thing in his school. And, and I would, I, this kid's not going to go to college. And I could see this kid pursuing working somewhere. And when he walked in, let's say there's a local cabinet shop here in town that, that has automated. If he walked in there tomorrow and you know, took a little bit of his portfolio, what he has done on a CNC router, what he can do on a CNC router. I'm sure he could fit right in there programming machines and you know, programming the machines to cut cabinets in, in a few months. Just be basically learning their software, which he's excellent at. I really appreciate your time today and, and tell us about your program. And um, uh, I, I guess I'll talk to you soon. Thanks a lot, Keith. My pleasure. All right. Take care. Have a good day.